Now we got to get to this overturned call. There was so much in this game, wasn't there? Um, okay. <clears throat> so we all know like w- what happened. The officials throw a flag for defensive pass interference. An egregiously bad call, by the way. Terrible call. But as I have stated over the course of the last few weeks, officiating is bad everywhere in every game. There was terrible calls in our game. The officiating in college football right now is really poor. Really poor. And most of the bad calls are centered around pass interference, which, to the official's credit or defense, impossible to def- to officiate. I mean, I, I understand. But this one, it's like, oh, my gosh, that is a bad call. Georgia player runs into the Texas player. They're fighting, and then it's a pick, and all of a sudden the flag comes out. Number one is it was a bad call. Number two is then chaos erupts, as we all know. Bottles on the field. Sark is going over there, holding up his hands. And during that time, the officials have time to confer. And the replay has been up on the Jumbotron. And the bottles are on the field. And the teams are coming in from their benches onto the field so that they're away from the bottles. They get it under control. They clean up the field. And meanwhile, the officials have had a chance to like look up at the Jumbotron and be like, oh, man, that was a terrible call. That was a bad call. And they changed the call. I've never in my life seen anything like this. Never. Never. They changed the call. They rewarded the child throwing a fit in the candy aisle at your local grocery store to get his mom to buy him a Snickers. And when you see that in the grocery store, aren't you like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that that parent just allowed that kid to throw a fit and get his way. I know you do. I think it. I think it. And guess what? My kid's been on the floor. Guess what he didn't get? A Snickers. You know why? I'm an adult. You can't. They changed the call. They changed the call. Was it the correct call? Yes. Yes. And would I love for them to get the correct call? Absolutely. But the precedent that this set, third thing, Kirby Smart, absolutely right. Absolutely right. Here's what Kirby Smart said after the game in regards to the call, and he's absolutely right. I don't know what I'm allowed to say and not say, so I I won't comment because I want to respect the, the wishes of the SEC office. But I will say that now we've set a precedent that if you throw a bunch of stuff on the field and endanger athletes, that you got a chance to get your call reversed. And that's unfortunate because to me, that's dangerous. That's not what we want. And that's not criticizing officials. That's what happened. 100% right. If you allow your child to throw a fit on the floor of a supermarket to get a Snickers, he's going to do it the next time you're at the supermarket. Everybody knows this. Everybody knows this. And and they rewarded the child throwing a fit. Like you can't you cannot do this. And here's the thing folks is it's not just the next Georgia game or the next Texas game. It's not specific to that fan base. There were 10 million people watching that game. This is every fan watching a high school football game or a, or a high school basketball game. What those officials did in that game on Saturday in Austin, Texas, set back officiating decades because every single sporting event that anybody is at for the next year or six months or however long, they're going to think in the back of their minds, hey, if we throw a big enough fit, maybe we'll get a Snickers. I mean, I cannot believe they reversed the call. You you cannot do that. It is not a reviewable call. You can't challenge it. You can't change it. Once it's made, you live with it. I think it was Jim Joyce, if I'm not mistaken. Was it Jim Joyce who who made the bad call at first base on the Armando Galarraga would have been perfect game for the Detroit Tigers? You guys know what I'm talking about? Like, I think it was Jim Joyce. I might be wrong on the name of that, but like, 
You think he didn't want to go back and be like, oh man, I blew it. I, I want to reverse the call. But you can't. But you can't. I can't put toothpaste, spilled toothpaste back in a in a bottle of toothpaste. And I damn sure can't give my child a Snickers if they cry on the floor of a supermarket. What are they doing? I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And my hope, my hope is that this doesn't continue. And you know what? In order for it not to continue, they may have to change rules. And, and so I immediately thought to myself, like, well, maybe we need to make pass interference reviewable. And then I thought to myself, well, that is just awful. You can't make subjective fouls reviewable. Then we have to make holding reviewable. And then I started thinking about review and uh, review and 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 fixing calls and how do we get it right and yet avoid a situation like this and and how do we make sure that we're not giving petulant children snickers every time they throw a fit and then it came to me and then i actually got kind of happy so i went from angry to happy because i'm like wait there is a fix there is a fix you guys know i call ufl games in the spring the fix is in the ufl the ufl has a super challenge Every coach has one super challenge. Any call, any time, they throw a challenge. Hey, I thought that was offside challenge. Hey, I, I thought that that was a, a poor pass interference call challenge. And now what you're doing is that you're creating a system where officials can get back together. Then they can review it and they can all chime in rather than just one guy in the heat of the moment throwing his flag. And everybody can be like, hey, you know what? I think that that call should be reversed. And then everybody knows that that's just the process of the super challenge. So the crowd knows there's a process for a super challenge. So they don't need to throw a fit. It would be like a kid knowing that, hey, 5 p.m. on Friday, if I've been good all week, then I get my Snickers. Now you're setting a better precedent. The super challenge. Or you say like one a week. One a week. You get one a week, kid. You get one Snickers a week. So ask for it when you want, but you don't get two. You don't get two. So this is the only way to fix this moving forward because right now the precedent is throw a fit, throw bottles onto the field, regardless of what sporting event that we're at, and maybe the officials will heed our fit and they'll give us what we want. A, a, just an egregious job. An egregious job. You have set college football back, high school football back, every sporting event back, every official that's trying to do the best job that they possibly can. So you know what? We've got to go to a super challenge. It's the only way forward. It's the only way forward. UFL for the win. I want super challenges back in college. I want them in college football like tomorrow. If we can change clock rules because we think Dan Lanning maybe gained an advantage by putting 12 guys on the field and we can change the clock rules in one week and we don't have to wait for your two-year cycle or whatever garbage you have in CAA, guess what? Guess what we can do? We can have a super challenge tomorrow. I want super challenges right now. Guess who else wants a super challenge? Kalen DeBoer. You know why? That was offside. Thank you for watching the Joel Class Show YouTube channel. And if you like this clip, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. And you can stay up to date on all of my college football coverage.